What's up guys? Today we are going in the- I'm just kidding. I am Cannonball Brad and let's go ahead and dive right in into podcast number two. Uh, man, I really can't get this series out of my mind, so I spend time at work coming up with um, topics to talk about and I have conversations with a lot of friends of mine um, and these are probably the most prevalent ones right now. Uh, first off that I wanted to talk about was adapters for pistols and shotguns. Do they have a place in Airsoft uh, other than CQB? And I personally think the answer is yes. And I see a lot of the more hardcore milsim guys, they have issues specifically with high kappa adapters and Glock adapters that take the M4 magazines. Um, their argument is they're pushing for realism. If that's your ultimate goal is the realism, then why are you running a PTS EPM-1 that holds 251, 52 M4 mag shots? Like, yeah, that, that makes no sense. Can you imagine the size of a real M4 that holds 250 shots? It's a box mag is bigger than most box mags at that point 250 shots okay so that's the first piece of realism broken uh my cat really wants to join us for the podcast i guess you could chill with us cassie okay as long as you chill all right you know be a pirate cat right now sheesh up up on the shoulder okay all right <laughs> back to what I was saying um, so that's the first thing that breaks the realism the second thing is when you show up on a field running tiger stripe camo using a g3 or a psg1 and a chem mask as your airsoft what chem unit in the world runs tiger stripe and a g3 like you're running things that look good or maybe even perform well, but none of it is cohesive, right? And the only argument that I would be willing to accept for the realism side is if your field limits your magazines to 30 rounds, which my friend in New Jersey plays at a field that does do that. Okay, Cassie, this is no place for a cat. Goodbye. So, if your field limits your magazines to 30 BBs and specific camos and patches and things like that, um, which again, my, my buddy in New Jersey who plays at, you know, one of his outdoor fields, they do that. You can only run 60 round mid caps for SMGs or 30 round mid caps for your rifles. And there's a few other really bizarre rules. But unless your field is doing that, you have no place to say that a uh, pistol adapter doesn't belong in airsoft or a shotgun adapter doesn't belong in airsoft because there are extended pistol magazines that look just like my adapter, right? I run a 2011, the Combat Master by EMG with an ARP9 mag adapter. It's a long stick type um magazine you know probably like 10 inches long or so and i'm pretty sure that the arp9 chambered in nine millimeter right makes sense to plug into a nine millimeter pistol i mean i guess the the 2011 is nine millimeter max technically but i'm i'm sure that that doesn't break the realism by having this long magazine but when a site says no pistol adapters, I can't you run my pistol now. This pistol that I've dropped money into and time and effort and energy into customizing it and making it perform exceptionally well. I can't run that because it breaks the realism. And there's an issue with that. As a field, you're losing a big market on players that might only own a pistol that they've upgraded and tuned and only run as, with an adapter. Um, you're also scrutinizing over one little rule that 
breaks the realism, but really, if you start looking in Airsoft, you find a lot of things that break the realism that no one bats an eye about. I just bought an 800 round AK mag. Like, <laughs> can you imagine the AK with an 800 round? I'm, I'd basically be walking around with an AK and like a keg below it. It's ridiculous, but it's it breaks the realism. Little things like that break the realism. So drawing this arbitrary line at adapters is kind of pointless to me. Um, unless, like I said, the only thing that I would I would feel is okay is unless you're at a field that is so restrictive in the ammo you run and the camos you wear, and when you show up, it really looks like a military training facility, you know? Uh, I guess that'd be fine if they had a role. But I wanted to talk about that because this event that I wanted to go to has um, a no pistol adapter rule. It's specifically there. You can run any other HPA system. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of stupid to me, to be honest, because I'd love to run a legit 1911 because it's a World War II themed uh, event. I'd love to run a 1911. And 1911s are notorious for having gas inefficiency and gas issues. So I'd love to run it with a CQB Russian adapter and a, uh, and a hose. Like, but I can't because there's a rule that says no pistol adapters. <laughs> and then for the 5v5 tournament, there's a rule that says no shotgun adapters, too. So, <clears throat> that was the first thing, because I thought that was one of the more prevalent issues I have. Um, which leads me to my second point that I wrote down. My objective is to talk about Airsoft and you know, bring up interesting points with you guys, but my perspective is going to be skewed because I play at a really open indoor facility, Air Oregon Airsoft Arena, and the staff there, I guess, they really set me up well because I don't have problems with any type of play. Any play style, new, old, milsim, casual, Speed QB, highly competitive. I don't have any issue with different play styles. But because of that, because of my home field, <laughs> I guess leading me in a really positive direction, my perspective is skewed compared to a lot of other airsoft fields and a lot of the airsofters in the US and really just around the globe. Speed QB is growing, which I think is awesome, but most of the airsoft community isn't interested in that 5v5 highly competitive fast-paced action they want to be weekend warriors they want to live you know a normal life and then on the weekend they go and shoot people dressed as military members of some imaginary military that doesn't exist <laughs> and they have issue with the pistol guys because there's a perception that those speed to be HPA guys with pistol adapters are going to overshoot, knock all hits, cheat. But realistically, that pistol is probably better tuned than most of the AEGs on the field that day. That guy running a pistol with a mag adapter has probably put two, three hundred, four hundred dollars extra into that gun or more after the initial $200 purchase of that gun, plus the tank, plus the regulator, they're probably cleaning it. They're probably, you know, making sure that the hop up is spot on every time, putting in a good hop rubber, changing up the hop up, um, the, the hop up tool. I can't remember what it's called. Freak. Um, there's the Lalax, the, the 
aluminum one that's like rainbowy colored uh, for the Tokyo Mori series. They're probably changing out every little piece that they can to make that pistol perform amazingly. And people, for the most part, don't like being stomped on. So I'm guessing that one of the reasons why certain things are banned is just because those players play really aggressively. They're really fast. They're generally on the more athletic side. Uh, fast, you know, I already said fast. <laughs> fast again, because literally these guys can run up on you and ba 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 I mean, if you've seen the clips of what you can do with a pistol, I'm sure that on the receiving end, it's upsetting when some guy turns a corner and kills you and seven of your buddies and all of you have to respawn. So what do you do? You ban the adapter because his pistol wouldn't be able to shoot, you know, 300 shots out of it. It should only hold 25 and he should have to reload. Well, you have an issue with the play style and his highly competitive nature, not the tools being used. And if you have a problem with a pistol uh, being able to shoot 200 rounds, then you should have a problem with any AEG being able to shoot 200 rounds. That's too much. That's ridiculous. I personally don't have a problem. I think that mid caps that shoot 250 rounds is awesome. And there should be more on the market besides the PTS EPMs. And they're kind of dominating that high capacity mid cap uh, customer base that are looking for that without having to resort to a high cap magazine. Um, I think there should be more. I think there should be one for AK series guns too. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about most of Airsoft isn't speed QB. So most of you out there probably disagree with me. You probably think that that pistol adapters are ruining Airsoft. And that's completely valid. But I would love you to leave a comment as to why you think that. And I will give you probably 10 counter arguments against that thought process, or at least arguments that reveal to you how illogical it is to ban one immersion breaking item when you could be getting rid of a lot more on the same level, starting with 200 plus round mid caps for AEGs. That's the first thing that I would bring up to you in an argument. But again, my view is skewed because I play at a field that's really open to every sort of player. The next topic I wanted to talk about, um, I guess that's my segue because I, I really can't finish that conversation without having an in-depth one-on-one conversation, but I'm just giving you my opinion on adapters and my view will be skewed because I play speed QB and I play outdoors and I don't see a problem running a pistol with an adapter outdoors. So, <clears throat> uh, another thing that I've noticed lately though, going on to the next topic is a lot of people seem to have issue with Novridge products and Novridge himself that I, I don't understand. Um, I put a comment on US Airsoft's post on Instagram yesterday. Uh, he put a post up that said, um, you know, what gun would you like to see that isn't an M4 dominate the market? And I said, I would love to see a good company like Novridge make a SIG M MPX. And uh, I know VFC owns the licenses to, sorry, I have a zipper on my pocket broken, which sucks. I know SIG um, licenses are owned by VFC. So I, I do think that Novridge could legally 
maybe even partner with VFC because VFC was the one that made his SSR 15, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't think that there would be an issue with Novridge producing an MPX if it was v if it was like a kind of VFC Novridge tag team rifle. Um, but I know that VFCs aren't that reliable. And really any gun that you buy and you can't run stock isn't reliable. And all these VFC 416 fanboys out there, the first thing that I don't understand is, like, maybe I'm just an idiot, uh, but why is the 416 so sought after? There are guns that are amazing out there. And I got into Airsoft, and I, I knew what the 416 was, but I didn't think that it was the god tier of all weapons, right? But that's literally, like, the only thing people will run sometimes. They'll have multiple VFC 416s with different builds inside of them. And receiver kits from the real steel version. Like, what's so good about a 416? There's other good guns out there. There's other high performance. The G3 series. The, the G36 is an amazing gun. Um, the MP7 is an amazing gun. In real life, the P90 is an amazing gun. Like... Yeah, that maybe the P90 in Airsoft isn't that great, but guess what? Most VFC products aren't that great, right? They sell a lot, but they also have a lot worked on and returned. And in all the Reddits that I keep looking at, VFC does some really crazy stuff to their guns. Super gluing things, and then the glue spreads into the gears. Um, having warped gearboxes and things like that that you literally can't fix like why is vsc 416 such an amazing gun when you can't run it you literally can't run it stock when you buy a 416 you're spending 300 400 bucks depending on where you get it probably 500 to turn it into a starter gun a builder gun that you build on top of after that like why not just get any other M4 or or what like a Mark 17 right the GNG Mark 17 just came out get that instead because at least you'll have a gearbox you can shoot with um oh that was a sidetrack is Novridge good I think that Novridge products the SSG 24 SSG 10 SSG 96 I think they are good people will argue that they're just upgraded cheap guns I will not counter argue because there are videos out there that break down the cheap gun versus Novridge gun and you can see the polymer differences. He's using real steel. He's using CNC aluminum parts. He's running a uh, steel type or inner barrel. He's running maple leaf hop up. Like you, you would buy the shitty gun for 100, 200 bucks and put an extra 400 bucks into that gun and it might work, it might not work, or you can get a Novridge gun, which is good, and not have to do anything to it. How do you think that that's trash? You make no sense. So, um, I think that Novridge is doing a good job. I see people using the Novridge SSP-18 inside SpeedQB because it's, an, it's a pre-upgraded high kappa, and you don't have to do much to it. You can short stroke it, you can change up the hammer. Um, you can, you know, run it as is and it'll be fine. But those are the two things that I would do is just short stroke it and change up the hammer and the hammer spring and like the um, nozzle spring and stuff like that. You know, just a couple internal parts. But <clears throat> everything else is fine. I would rather get that than a Tokyo Marui High Kappa Gold Match because when you buy that, you're still gonna spend an extra 100, 200 bucks on internal parts alone. You're gonna get a tight port inner barrel. You're gonna get uh, a better blowback housing and blowback unit, probably. You're gonna get a new hop-up bucking. Uh, you're gonna change your outer barrel eventually to have a threaded outer barrel so you can run a tracer on it. 
right there, the outer barrel is probably gonna be between 60 and 100 bucks. The other things, right, 10 for the hop bugging, maybe 15 for the hop bugging, and then like 30 to 60 for the barrel. You're already looking at between low end, 100, high end, 200 bucks for three upgrades. Or you can get a Novrich SSB 18. How do you think that that's garbage? So that's my counter argument to anyone who hates on Novrich stuff. He makes amazing stuff. I don't think I agree with him for using VFC to produce his Novrich uh, SSR 15 or the AR 15 or whatever the heck it's called. But that's on him. Um, the gun I'd like to see entering US Airsoft's post is an MPX. Uh, the only other brand I'd like to produce an MPX is KWA. But that would mean KWA has to obtain the licenses to Sig Sauer, which I think they should. I think KWA is doing a really good job and their customer service is amazing. Um, I spoke with someone on Instagram recently and we talked about the Ronin 47 and a couple upgrades that you can do inside Type or the If you buy a standard Ronin 47 and you throw in a Gate Titan, a flat trigger, and uh, a Type Bore inner barrel, new bucking, you have the Kaiju 47. You have the exact same gun that costs <laughs> in the UK right now, it's like a thousand dollars, right? That's crazy. Or you can spend 350 or 400 bucks on the gun and put 100 bucks of upgrades, 200 bucks of upgrades into it, and you have the same thing. So, <clears throat> I trust Novridge products. I think he's doing a great job. All those haters out there, I think they just hate on him because they think it's cool. They think it's cool to be, ooh, the snarky guy. I don't like Novridge. <laughs> Yeah, they, it's not cool. You sound like a drone. You sound like all the other people that hate him. And you're the minority. There's, it's a minority of people that hate him that have loud voices on Reddit and on YouTube comments. But most people like his stuff. And I guess I'm going to officially declare that I like Novridge products. And I'm not even, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I, I have no followers. <laughs> like, I don't have sponsors. I, this is just my freaking opinions out here. And if you disagree, just switch channels. There's other people more educated than me, um, with more airsoft history than me, but I'm gonna say things that are on my mind. Which finally brings me to my last point. I'd like to continue talking about airsoft stuff, but I'd, I wanna know what you wanna talk about. What questions do you have for me to look into and dive into if you want to know my opinion on anything ask it below um i want to ask you guys what brands do you have that you trust to run stock because like i said i wouldn't run a vfc stock i feel like i'd have to upgrade it if i bought one um but i'm gonna run my sema stock until it breaks you know that's reliable to me so what brands do you find reliable do you have a gun that you've had for more than a year that you've never upgraded? Anything inside? No changes at all. Please leave it down in the comments. I'd love to know what it is and I can make a list of them and a whole series reviewing them, talking about them. I might even end up purchasing one or two of them because I'm looking for reliable guns as backups always. What is the best piece of gear that you've ever bought? Uh, probably in the next video, I'm gonna talk about some of my gear that I've bought that I absolutely love. And again, if you have questions that you'd like answered, I would love to answer them. I will answer every single question in the chat or in the comments. Uh, it could literally be any question at all, I will answer it. And I hope that you take the initiative to put a comment down below, any questions that you have. Don't forget to like and share this video. I hope that entertained you a little bit. And I will see you all next time. <laughs>